welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Kemlier. Our next guest is the extremely funny comedian, Jenna Friedman. She is returning to Adult Swim with her second Soft Focus special. In it, she investigates sexual harassment in gaming and interviews notorious gun-wielding crazy man, John McAfee. Let's take a look. The following content may be graphic or sexual in nature. Please be advised. Really great. There's so much joy in your voice when you say sexual. <laughs> I'd like to mute that joy okay. and make it sound like a warning. Okay. The following content may be graphic or sexual in nature. Please be advised. You're swallowing the AL in sexual. <laughs> I'm what now? You're swallowing it. I'm Try swallowing. Try not to eat the word sexual. Try sexual. to just. Sexual. All right, I got it. I'm giving you what you want. Please welcome Jenna Friedman. Let's hear it. Hey. Hi. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Oh, it's great. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on the second special. Thank you. Do we call it a special? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, great. I just wanted to make sure we got the you know nomenclature yeah. right there. Uh, in the first one, you uh, explored a host of different issues. You had um, some sex dolls. You had a frat guy that potentially had sex or did have sex with the, the doll. Well, he didn't. We, he was falsely Someone accused. Someone did. Someone falsely accused him. Right. And that was me. And um, <laughs> yeah, no one had sex with the with the doll. And you interviewed the cannibal cop. Gil. Gil. Yes. Yeah, we're Twitter friends now. How's that going? It's cool. It's hard for me to promote shows in New York, but. Um, Does he come out? I'm afraid he will. No, he's fine. I mean, I th as of now, but yeah, he's dating again. Um, yeah, so I think he's now looking for women who are into like blood play as opposed to someone who d is not. Who's into being cooked? Yeah, do you guys know who the cannibal cop, Gil Val Valle? Well, he's dating again, so watch out. <laughs> he's on OK Cupid. Um, yeah, he uh, was a, it's funny, but it's not, it's real. He was an NYPD police officer who plotted to eat his wife and her friends online. And it was an, and then his wife put spyware on the computer and found out about it and left him. And then he ended up in jail. And now he's out of jail because you can't be prosecuted for thought crimes. I don't know why I'm just looking at you. <laughs> I'm like, you don't know him, but if you're single, like everyone in New York, just watch out. And now in this special, uh, you're dealing with sexual harassment, not just in gaming, but with gamers. You are talking to about it, and you are interviewing uh, John McAfee, McAfee, McAfee? Yeah, McAfee. McAfee. McCafe, tomato, tomato, yeah. McCafe is how you, how you say his name? Yeah. What I'm Sponsored, but no. <laughs> what made you want to talk to him? Well, he's running for president right. in 2020. But that's so also like, as a crazy person does. Yeah, but I mean, it already happened that a crazy person ran for president. True. So, one. and won. Well, you know, he ended up in office. Argue, yes. Right. He Debatably did. won. He didn't, yeah. He didn't win the popular he vote. He didn't win the popular vote, and the Electoral College is a relic of slavery we should get rid of. Anyway. And also polling data of the states that he won by like 30,000 votes and was given to Russia. Yes. Voter suppression. We spent the la in, the, in the green room, we just talked about Russia and we're like, we're just going to not. But anyway. We'll try to focus on the special, yeah, but totally I, I guarantee you whatever t we talked about in there is going to bleed into this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like how you matched my neurotic energy. It, may, it was like a welcome to New York. <laughs> it was really nice. You were like, we're all going to die. They're going to bomb us with nukes. And I was like, no, we've always had nukes. It could happen at any time, whether it's this time or in 10 years. Don't yeah. worry. And then you're like, two minutes. <laughs> it's great. Um, so you get, where is he, where is uh, McAfee living now? Uh, I'm not allowed to. Oh, you're not allowed to say? No. Okay. Yeah. In an undisclosed location uh, with multiple gunmen who were very friendly, but armed. And As was he? As was he. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want to say drunk, but drinking. Sure. Yeah, I didn't breathalyze him. I should have, actually. But I didn't know he was going to be drinking, so. What was it like talking to him? <sighs> I shouldn't say this, but he's very charismatic. Um, God, he's so likable. <laughs> he, you know, I don't know. It was interesting. The thing is, you know, he's been accused of murder. He's been accused of assault, sexual assault. 
And there's like this tendency where you don't want to put these people on a platform. You don't want to talk to them. But at the same time, they are running for power, for office and so for president. And so I just felt, you know, I wish we had been a little less delicate with Trump before he became president so we could get a sense of what his values were and who he was and have a documentation of some of his, like, maybe less censored views prior to running. So that I feel like we did. Yeah, I mean, to some degree, we did. I would say the difference between McAfee and Trump, I mean, there are many differences. McAfee is like a self-made man. Yeah, <laughs> He's that, like that actually is actually intelligent. But I will say one thing that I recognized in Trump right away in 2015 is that he did articulate a certain type of, not I wouldn't necessarily belief, but beliefs. This type of Racist. belief. <laughs> like. sure, sure, yeah, 100%. But also, the status quo is fine. Stop complaining about it. And those who complain about it are leeching off the system or they're doing this. It's totally wrong, often racist, often sexist, more often racist and sexist. But it was something that I recognized right away and he articulated it very well. McAfee, I found all over the place. Well, I actually think... <laughs> McAfee, I mean, he has like that libertarian ethos and he, um, I think that he is more, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's not like we're live. <laughs> um, you know, they're both insane. So I, I don't know if Trump was more, uh, coherent. I don't think Trump is more coherent than McAfee. Yeah. Um, they're both on probably a form of speed, um, but Trump's is legal. I think, I don't know if Trump has killed any, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't really, I would rather, please don't quote me. John McAfee than Donald Trump? A hundred percent. Why is that? Because McAfee, even though he's been accused of sexual assault once, Trump has been accused of sexual assault multiple times. McAfee's pro-choice on the record and pro-women's rights more so than... Donald J. Trump. Well, as was Trump was that until he found that he could co-op the yeah. religious right for his own benefits. Exactly. Yeah. But I think, you know, having McAfee on record talking about it is helpful in case he actually, I know it sounds like haha, -ha, but we, in 2015, we laughed equally at the prospect of Donald Trump being president. So really, who knows now? I mean, we're living in a simulation, so it's not even up to yeah, us. Yeah, we're living in a 90s <laughs> satire. Like, yeah, we, we're, yeah, idiocracy. This, the Matrix broke already, and yeah. we're just sort of stuck glitching in it consistently. Yeah. Donald Trump is the glitch that alerts us that we're in the Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the first section of this, you uh, interview a group of gamers about sexual harassment in mm -hmm. gaming. What made you want to cover that topic or sexual harassment specifically in the gaming in world? In gaming. Well, I read an article about a woman who was playing a game that had like a multiplayer function. And she was in her brother-in-law's house with her husband playing this video game. She opened it up to multiplayer and all of a sudden this guy, she had, this, she had like a generic avatar but a female voice, and he started running after her and groping her. And she was, like, giggling, but he, like, wouldn't stop. Like, a char as a character in the game. As a character in the game, in VR, he was, like, chasing her and groping her. A and I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, he, uh, and she was, like, it, it was an assault, but it felt like it. And that was so fascinating. And then she, we tried to actually get her to talk to us, but she went underground and isn't doing interviews because she got, like, doxxed and harassed after the fact. So I realized that it was like a really interesting issue and then I kind of, I did a little more research on it and just saw like how endemic it is and how, and this isn't really in this show because it's not as funny, but a lot of times like, you know, harassment and gaming can extend into reality where like someone will be, you know, teasing someone online and then the person online will typically woman kind of joke back and then it, in the case of someone I had talked to, it extended to like stalking and like in-person encounters. And so it is a really scary issue that we kind of take lightly because we're like, oh, this is gaming. Mm -hmm. Which is crazy because gaming is one of the biggest industries in the world and millions and like arguably more people play video games and multiplayer games than watch the Big Bang Theory on a mm -hmm. weekly basis, you know? I don't know if we'd care if Big Bang Theory audiences were getting sexually harassed, but I think we would. I mean, 
that's Les Moonves's. <laughs> that's true. Sorry, yeah, I totally forgot that that was it's that was old Les. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. So you, this, it's funny. It's just <laughs> we can't talk about any industry without something like, oh, that's that person. Yeah. Oh, that's because they were all monsters, and yeah, most likely but it's still cool are. that we're talking about it because that's yeah. how we kind of start to change it. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll yeah. get like really great people in power right as we're about to die. <laughs> like it's all going to work out and then it won't. But whatever. And, and then know? as we're about to die, all the people who were supporting the horrible people in power will be like, see, you needed horrible people in power. That's what, oh, we're all dead. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I imagine the conversation ending. Mm -hmm. um, so you get these people together, you get these gamers together and you give them a VR simulation of essentially being assaulted by Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> yeah. It's not entirely VR. Because there's, <laughs> it's like a sensory game with m like a, a large VR element, but it's also, you know, interactive. Um, yeah. Yes. Where did you find the actor who was willing to, he to is do a, this? He's a porn star and he's an, uh, he does a ton of different stuff. And he, one of the, he's a Harvey Weinstein rate actor. That's like a genre of porn that... <laughs> He does. He, I don't know if we captured this as well, but he did not like the way I directed him. Why? I don't know. I think it's just like a woman who's like clothed being like, do this. You know, like I think that alone he was like, meh. And he was like, hey, you at least going to take your top off for this? Something, something? Yeah. yeah. And then, and then he had a hard time performing. Yeah. And then I was like, can you just. Can, this is a really important piece about like sexual harassment. Can you just like get hard? <laughs> and he was like, nah. <laughs> and you know, I, I learned a lot about. It's hard, you know, like for female directors or whatever. Um, it it was it was challenging um, to try to you know get him to perform because uh, as a director you need to like have like enough, you need to be like comforting. But like he wants the authoritative voice of a man yelling, "Get hard!" We to ended get up him hard. My EP had to kind of step in and and like. Give him like a guy to guy talk, because he for wasn't real? able to perform with me. I was like trying to be understanding, but it just was really hard. Not it. Not yeah. The experience of trying to. I'm like, please just focus on all the women who are victims of assault. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you guys. Come on. I'm teasing. But did he actually have a hard time getting? Yes. It? Okay. Yeah. Yes, and so we put it into the piece. Like there's a that little one bit in the segment where I'm like, "Come on, buddy, you can do it." And and but that was that came from that was a result of him having a tough time. Okay. So how did the soft spoke soft focus specials come about? When did it? How did this whole thing um, start? Adult Swim uh, asked me to do. Um, whatever I wanted to do uh, based on um, uh, web videos that I had done um, that were, I think the what drew them in was this web series about, it was like a New York Times parody with a woman and a serial killer planning their wedding based off like the vows videos. Um, and so they were like, do you want to do something like that? And I was like, I have something else in mind. And they've been very cool. And so we did the first one last year, and then they ordered another one, and that's what this is, and it's been really fun. How are you choosing the topics? Well, um, I am I know their demo is, I don't know the exact number, but it's a lot of, like, young guys, and I just kind of wanted to find something, like, funny, but, like, a way to talk to them, maybe through humor. And we had a conversation about, like, this next special, because the first one has a segment on campus rape, and then, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you're like, who is this psychopath? <laughs> and then the second one is about, like, sexual harassment in gaming, and I was talking to, like, a male producer, and they're like, do you think we want to, like, change the topic? And I'm like, we are changing the topic. Like, there's so many facets of society where like sexual assault and harassment occur in distinctly different ways like we could make such a meal we could do a whole season meal of of the many different ways uh people are harassed and assaulted in our society um, four course meals a four course the appetizer being just harassment or, or well, verbal, verbal harassment there's yeah there's workplace assault the and dessert? harassment the dessert <laughs> oh god <laughs> Um, this is my fault. Sorry. No, it's it's not your fault. No, then no. This <laughs> no, specifically. I, I just wanted to say that 
And I just wanted to say that. Goodwill hunting style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want us to cry because that's really what people want. Don't fuck with me, Sean. <laughs> they just want to see vulnerability. They don't care what we're saying. They just want to see us crack. It bums me out that I know the follow-up line in that scene. <laughs> the oh yeah. yeah. Why doesn't why? It's a great movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well. No, it is pretty great. It is pretty yeah. great. I go for a talented Mr. Ripley, I think, over over Goodwill Hunting, though. Interesting. In terms of early Matt Damon. Gotcha. Yeah. School Ties. School Ties is great. Yeah. Yeah. School Ties is great because it didn't get the appreciation that Goodwill mm. Hunting got. Yeah. So it can still kind of, yeah, it's nicer to watch. And not as many frat guys love School Ties. I feel like Goodwill Hunting, you get a lot of frat guys that are like, how do you like them apples, eh? And I'm like, oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the guys that are in the first episode of Soft Focus. Sweethearts. I just want to make an announcement that no men were harmed in the making of any of my content. Because I love men and I want to make them feel safe. And I just, you know, I just think we need to be having conversations and, and you know, helping each other all evolve. You have been uh, in comedy now, doing stand up now for how long? Like 13 years. I would say when it comes to Me Too and um, women in industries, comedy was the first one that we started to kind of see a sea change. Women in comedy were kind of coming forward and talking about not just harassment, but just sort of the way that the culture worked and the way that nightclubs worked and the industry worked as a whole. Have you seen in the last three, four, five years uh, a real change occur? Yeah, I mean, since I've started, A, like, you're not asking our women funny. No one's asking that anymore. A couple years ago, they actually were still asking Remember. that question. And now they're like, how has it changed for women? And I'm like, it, it, in this one tiny pocket of the world, it, it has gotten better. Um, but I remember listening to, like, Meryl Marco, who... Um, Worked with Letterman uh, in the show's inception. I don't know what a murder is happening up yeah, there. I think but, so. Um, Someone's dying up there. Someone's, well, yeah. You're going to do it at least jump off so we can see it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> um, uh, so, Meryl Marco, brilliant comedian, comedian. <laughs> she um, was on some like talk show talking about the state of women in comedy in the 80s and literally saying exactly what I'm saying now like uh, like so it there is like this thing about like things are changing but we can't just kind of ever relax we always like have to push forward and and keep trying to be inclusive to you know all people like you know women people of color uh non-binary whatever not well, ah <laughs> but you know what I mean so uh yeah, because it's like things happen in waves, you know? There's like positive change, but it's not a given. And I think when we relax, we end up with like someone like Trump. Yeah, you know what's so interesting about positive change is that positive change has such a negative reaction, I think, sometimes, where people are like, oh, they're pushing too hard or they're asking for too much. But the only way to get a modicum amount of change is to push too yeah. hard. And then on the other side... It's to not have a middle ground. Yeah, that that's one thing, but also I think among like you know people who are more progressive or liberal, it kind of breeds complacency. We're like, oh, like President Obama is our president. Like well, I don't need to protest or do this or care, you know. And I think we always this has been an interesting wake up call that we always kind of need to continue to push to help people who are not in power and maybe on the margins and more vulnerable than the rest of us. Do you feel like this was a needed wake up call? No, I wouldn't wish, I'm not Susan Sarandon. I wouldn't wish Trump on anyone. I mean, it, people have died. Children have died in immigrant detention centers, like on our watch. You know, it's, it's horrible. And uh, we all should be screaming. Where's the, there you are. Do you right. tell the camera that we should all be <laughs> screaming say directly into the? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, Jenna, I love the show. I love the specials. Thank, Thank you, you so much for making them. Thanks for having me. It's Thanks been... for coming here. Yeah. Uh, they are on Adult Swim. When can people see uh, the spe first specials online? If you Google it's on search YouTube, if you Google Jenna Friedman and Campus Rape, that's the first thing that comes up. Thankfully. <laughs> um, <laughs> and 
uh, this next, are you laughing at the prospect of me being raped? I was laughing at that, but then I was laughing at the the laugh that you threw out afterwards. <laughs> was... I'm just hamming it up. All right. Um, and then uh, the special airs January 25th at midnight Eastern Standard Time on Adult Swim. Yeah. It's incredibly funny. She's Thank amazing. You. Give a big round of applause for Jenna. Let's hear it. Thank you. Thank you so much.